In this video, we're going to be talking about how to convert your signature into a watermark so that you can place it anywhere you want. Maybe in your images, your designs, or even in your fan mails in case you're a celebrity. So this video is divided into three sections. Number one, we're going to be talking about the right ways to create it in the first place so that it becomes easier for Photoshop to analyze that and convert that into a watermark. Secondly, we're going to be talking about the exact process on how to convert that to a watermark. In the third part, we're going to learn the best practices to save it. Suppose your image is dark. You don't want your signature to be black, right? Because if you do, your image and your signature will be indistinguishable. You want it to have a particular kind of brightness. So we're going to learn how to make it highly customizable, how to be able to change colors, so on and so forth every time you place it, how to change the opacity. There's so much more to learn in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. So how do we create it in the first place? Pretty easy. Take a white piece of paper just like this and take a sketch pen and sign on it. Black sketch pen preferably. Just make a signature. Pretty easy, right? Now, if you're an artist, you'll get it right on the first time. But if you're somebody like me, this is what's going to happen. Now, you can, of course, go ahead, sign a couple of times in the same page. Just make sure that the signs don't overlap. Now, once you sign, you can do this. Choose which one is the best because this is going to appear in each and every one of your image or your design and then just put a tick beside it and also make sure that the tick does not overlap with the signature. Pretty easy, right? Now it's more easy. If you have a scanner, just scan it. If you don't have a scanner, if you have a camera or anything, even a smartphone, take a picture of this. Now here we are in Photoshop and let's go ahead and import the photos that we just clicked. Go to file open or you can also drag and drop if you want. I'm going to choose this one. I clicked one with the blue pen and this one is with the sketch pen. I'm going to choose this one. Now since this is a raw photo, it will open in Adobe Camera Raw. If this is not a raw photo, I'll tell you what to do. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and rotate this clockwise. Click on this button. This rotates this clockwise. Now, let's set the white balance right. Since this paper is gray, since this paper is neutral, it's actually white, but in this image, it is captured as light gray we can choose white balance from this, okay? Click on this eyedropper tool and click on this once. Okay, seems like the white balance is right. Now you can click on anything which is supposed to be gray or neutral in real life for white balance, okay? So we clicked on this and then all you need to do, press and hold the Alt or Option, take the white to the right. And just when you begin to see the artifacts, take it gradually to the right, just when you begin to see the artifacts, stop. Okay, if I go too much, look, the artifacts, just stop right here, okay? Press and hold the alter option again and we're going to do the same with blacks. But with blacks, we are going to take it to the left. Just when you begin to see the artifact, stop. Okay, too much, let's stop a little bit to the right. This is fine. You can also do this automatically, how? Okay, let's reset that. Click on this and let's camera raw default. Press and hold the shift key, double click on it. It automatically analyzes and sets the white point Press and hold shift again, double click on this, and it's done. Now, let's hold alt and see what job it has done, what kind of job it has done. It has left some artifacts. We'll take it to the right and we'll take this to the left just for security purposes. Once you're satisfied with this, do not click done. Click on open image, okay? If you click done, this will just close and you'll just wonder what, what the heck happened, okay? And if this was not a raw photo, it would have opened directly to this step without the Adobe Camera Raw interface. All you have to do then, very simple, go to Filter and then Adobe Camera Raw Filter or Camera Raw Filter and do the same settings as I already told you and then click OK. It's pretty much the same thing and I'm just going to click Cancel. Select the one which you like. In this one, I liked these two. Now select the one which you like. I like this one. All you have to do, pretty simple, let's zoom in quite a bit. Take the rectangular marquee tool and make a selection of this area. Do not worry about the extra things which are selected. We can always go ahead and easily delete that. Just like this and it's fine. All you need to do now, controller command C. Press controller command and C. C for copy. Now, controller command N. N for new. This opens up the new document dialog box. Make sure the clipboard is selected. Clipboard retains the exact resolution of the area that you just selected and copied. Okay, click create. Make sure the color profile here is sRGB. Working RGB, sRGB, select that and everything else is fine. Click okay. 
background contents white create now place it here press control or command v okay v for volunteers okay just to clarify that out this doesn't mean anything in photoshop take the brush let's delete these areas so i already had created a brush for it let's select a normal brush this one and delete this area paint it with white very simple Make sure the opacity and flow is 100 and it's pretty much done. Now all you need to do, go to select color range, simple, and make sure you have shadow selected and selection preview is grayscale. Now what does grayscale actually mean? Grayscale means that any area which is selected will be white, any area which is not selected will be shown black. This is just a representation, anything which is selected is white anything which is not selected is black now you can go ahead play with the range and fuzziness to see which one you like but let's understand what's actually happening okay i know you're confused let's understand this let's create a new document this is just for understanding purposes file new create any new document i'm going to create a thousand pixel grid and let's create a gradient from black to white just like that okay now if i go to select and then color range. If I choose shadows, and then have a look at this. Black is the area which is not selected. White is the area which is selected. So as you can see, it is selecting the dark areas. If I go ahead and decrease the fuzziness all the way to 0%, look at this. It is selecting the dark areas, but the selection is harsh. If I change the range now, have a look. If the range is zero, it selects the darkest pixels. If I increase the range, it begins to select brighter shades, okay? And that's what range is. And fuzziness just controls the transition between the area that is selected and area that is not selected. It makes the transition smoother. If the value is high, the transition is smooth. If the value is low, transition is harsh, okay? It doesn't select extra areas. It just makes the transition smoother. It does select extra area in the form of a transition, okay? Let's go ahead and cancel that. This was just for understanding this. Now, select color range. Select the range and fuzziness. According to your liking, this is exactly how your watermark will look like. Let's first of all decrease the range and the fuzziness all the way to zero, zero. Now increase the range to so much of a value where it becomes understandable as to what exactly is happening and your logo becomes quite visible and then increase the fuzziness. Maybe I'll just go ahead and decrease the range a little bit just like that. Click OK. And once you have this, create a new layer. You still have the active selection. Fill it up with black. How to fill it up with black? Make sure the foreground color is black. If it's not, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background color. Press D to reset the swatches. OK. Then fill it up with black. Press Alt Backspace. Option Delete if you're using a Mac. This fills it up with black. Simple, right? Now you can go ahead and delete layer 1. No use right now. Okay, now there are a couple of ways of applying this. You can apply this as a brush or an object. The choice is yours. So let's go ahead and learn how to create a brush out of it. Very easy. With a white background still there, all you have to do, go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and name the brush. Maybe Sign and Mesh 1, and click OK. And then the brush is created. Take the brush. Your brush is already ready. Choose the color that you want and you can just paint and make it smaller, bigger, do whatever you want. How to apply this? Very simple. Let's go ahead and import one of our images. Any image will do. Let's import, say this one. Let's import that into Photoshop just like that. And simple. With the brush selected, select the color that you want and just done. I would probably create it on a new layer so that I can control the opacity. And if you want to increase the intensity, Make a copy of it, control or command J. This increases the intensity. Now, how about creating an object about it? Okay, let's come back to this one. How to create an object? Okay, let's delete these things. Now, to create an object, turn off the background layer and the background has to be transparent, totally transparent. Then it's very simple. Go to file, export, export as, or save it as a PNG. Simple, our funda is saving it as a PNG. Why PNG? Because PNG supports transparent backgrounds. PNG supports transparency unlike JPEG, because JPEG comes with a white background no matter with what transparency your image has. So make sure the format is PNG and make sure transparency is checked and everything else is fine. Convert to sRGB. Check this if you had not converted to sRGB while creating a new document. Export all. Choose the name that you want. I'm going to save this in desktop. I already created one. So I'm going to name this, say, 
sign two. PNG save. Okay, now all you have to do, very simple. There are two ways, again, there are two awesome ways to import this. Go to file, place embedded, and then choose the one that you like. This was in desktop, sign to place. And it's done, make it smaller. Place it here. How to change the color of this? Very simple, create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on this gray white icon and choose solid color. Choose the color that you want, white, click OK. Press and hold alt or option and click on the line between these two. What this actually does is that it confines the solid color layer to the layer which is just beneath it, okay? It allows you to apply the solid color layer just to whatever there is in the immediate layer which is just beneath it. Now you can double click on this and change the color to whatever you like in real time which is exciting. Click OK if you're satisfied. I like white, click OK. If you want to decrease the opacity of this, select the layer, not the solid color adjustment layer. Select the layer and decrease the opacity as you like. Also, you can even drag and drop it if you want. So all you have to do, just go to the desktop, locate where it is, sign to, just drag it and drop it just over the canvas, okay? over the canvas, not here. If you do it here, it will open it up as a separate image, okay? Just over the canvas, just drop it here, and it's done, okay? These layers were already there, so it just messed up, but you get the idea, right? Let's go ahead and delete this, and let me show you again. Just drag it, and drop it over the canvas. This will open up as a separate layer, just like we did in Place Embedded. Pretty much the same, right? So that's how you convert your signature into a watermark. Just a couple of things to remember. Number one, while you're creating your signature, just make sure the color of the paper contrasts with that of the color with which you're signing with. In this case, that's why I chose white and black, completely contrasting, right? Don't sign with a light color sketch pen or a pen on a white paper. It's gonna be difficult for Photoshop to analyze that. Secondly, just open it up in Photoshop, set the white point and the black point and the white balance, and then select color range, choose shadows, you know what to do, range and fuzziness, and that's pretty much done. You can save that as an object or define that as a brush preset. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one, till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.